Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna be using some of the built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro 10 um, to create this slider animation um, and countdown that you can see on the screen now. So as soon as the countdown finishes here, we're gonna be jumping straight into the tutorial. Now, if these tips and tutorials are something you're interested in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. But otherwise, without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we create this slider um, and countdown animation in Final Cut Pro 10. So what you can see playing back on screen is what we're gonna create here in Final Cut Pro 10. Now there's two main elements to this. One is the countdown uh, timer that we're gonna make from the timecode plugin in Final Cut Pro 10. And then also we're gonna work with some shape layers and work on animating the cropping of those shape layers. So let's pause this for the moment and we will delete the layers that we have here. So now we've just got this time-lapse video playing back. So the first thing we're going to do is work on the countdown timer. So Final Cut Pro doesn't have a built-in uh, countdown timer, so we're going to need to make our own, if you like. Um, so we're going to go to Window, Workspaces, and Default, just so we make sure we're all looking at the same layout in Final Cut Pro 10. And then we're going to jump into our generators up at the top left here. So in our generators, um, if we come to generators here, we are looking for timecode. So we've got this built-in timecode plugin uh, for Final Cut Pro 10, and we can drag that down to the timeline. Now the timecode by default uh, moves forward in time, so we're actually going to make this a little bit longer than we need it to be so that we can trim it uh, when we have worked on this a little bit. So basically, with the timecode now, you can see um, we've got this counting forwards, and it's showing us the seconds and the frames uh, ticking by at the moment. And then we've also got uh, minutes as we kind of come up to the, the minute mark here. So we are going to select this, come up to our inspector on the top right, and come to the generator inspector. And we're going to do a couple things here. So for our background color, we're going to turn the opacity for this down to zero. So we want a transparent background. We don't want that black box in the background. And then we're also going to change the so we're going to drop this down to around 30 here. So in here also we can change the label that we have or delete it completely. And then once we've got all that set up, if we come to our clip, we're going to right click on the clip and go to new compound clip. So basically we're going to wrap this up into a compound clip. So what that will do is it will mean it will pull the time code from the compound clip rather than from the timeline here. So we can right click and go to new compound clip or we can use Alt and G, and we'll call this timer. So basically a compound clip um, is a clip that wraps up um, the clip or clips that you've kind of wrapped into that compound clip. So it makes a separate uh, timeline if you like. So if I double click on this compound clip, you can see I've got a timeline there with these gray dashes on the left and right. And if you accidentally come into a compound clip, normally what you can do is click the back button here to come back into your main timeline, or you can double click on the timeline up in the top left, and that will bring you out of the compound clip. But basically, because this compound clip is wrapped up, what we can do now is if we select it and come to our retiming options, we can reverse this clip. So basically now we'll have our clock counting down from one minute and 10 seconds rather than counting up. So if we come along here to one minute, so if we keep our clip selected, we can use Alt and the left square bracket to trim that, or we can drag this to our playhead. Whichever way works will be fine. And then we'll just pull this back. So now you can see we've got this clip exactly the same as the clip on the first layer, which I've already trimmed down. So once we've got that set up, we've got our countdown timer working, and then we just need to remove the hours and frames. We don't want those um, in this. And the way that we're gonna do that is by selecting this, and we're gonna come up to our inspector, and we're gonna go for the crop option. So basically we're gonna crop from the left until we see that disappear, and we're gonna crop from the right until we see that disappear. Now, cropping from the left and right, sometimes you might find you crop a little bit too much or it's hard to get that exact right spot when you're trimming things down. So we're gonna zoom in here 
and go to 200% and just use this little box to find our time code down here. So if we hover over the numbers in the inspector and hold down the Alt key, we can trim the crop in a more refined way. So basically, if I'm dragging this on its own, it's moving quite quickly. But if I hold down the Alt key, you can see it's moving much more slowly as I drag that up or down. And then I can do that for the right hand crop as well. So we can get that in just the right spot. So now we've got our time code right, we'll come back up to our view zoom level here and we'll fit that. And we basically want to move this um, across to the left. So we'll just use the regular transform tool to move this across and down a little bit. So it's going to line up with our slider as it kind of moves across the screen there. And it's also going to give us a location for where we add that shape to or how we crop it in the background. So we'll come up to our generators again on the top left and we're going to go into our solids and we'll just use the custom solid first of all, drag this down. So this is a black solid but we can make it any color we want. So with this selected, I'm going to turn off my transform options here by clicking this little rectangle and then we'll select a color from here. So so we can select a color by sliding the red, green and blue values. And we'll do that here because we want to get them all uh, to a gray. So I'm going to type in 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And that's going to give me a gray. Actually, we'll go for a little bit darker. So we'll go for 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. And whenever our RGB values are equal, we're always going to get a, a gray value there. So we'll hide this down and then we'll come up to our video inspector and here we're going to set up our top and bottom crop first of all so basically we're going to crop this down and then from the bottom as well and again we can zoom right in come across to the the numbers on the bottom left here and we can hold down the alt key and drag up and down to move that in a much more refined way so basically we can trim that down to just the right level to get this nice and lined up. So now we have a background behind our counter. So we're going to duplicate the background and change the color of it. So first of all, let's come up to our viewer here and we will zoom to fit again. And if we come to our gray layer, we can hold down the Alt key and drag up and that will show up that little green plus sign. And then we can drop a new layer there. And once we have this, um, we'll keep it selected. And we're going to come up to our generator inspector on the top right and then we will drop down and select a color for our slider. So we'll go for a nice magenta here. So if we come back to the beginning, at this particular point in time, we basically want our crop to be all the way from the right to the left. But before we do that, we'll come to the end of this clip. So I'm just gonna use the down arrow and then hit the left hand cursor once and that will bring me to the last frame of my clip so you can see the film strip on the right shows me I'm on the last frame and we can then come to the video inspector and for the crop the right hand crop we're going to set a keyframe and then we'll come all the way back to the beginning and we will basically now increase that right hand crop all the way until it disappears on the left. So basically, um, if we type in 1920, the full width of our HD footage here, because we already added a keyframe at the end, the new keyframe is added at the beginning when we make that adjustment. And we can press the play button, and now our slider will come on, and our timer will start to count down as our slider moves to the right. So we're working with a 1920 by 1080 video here, but if you're working with Instagram or Facebook square videos, then the process is exactly the same. The values of the crop might be slightly different, but you can create this countdown timer really easily. Now also, um, if we pause this and come to our gray layer here, I'm just gonna duplicate this one more time. If we wanna add any detail, um, say on the edge of this layer at the back here, we can just reduce the amount of crop. So if I change the color of this first, we'll make it a lighter 
blue, for instance. And then I come to my crop options. If I just remove a little bit of my top and bottom crop, we can add some outlines um, to that shape. And again, if I zoom in to 200% and come down to the bottom, if I want to make this a bit smaller, I can hold down the Alt or the Option key and just drag down and we can eyeball a slightly smaller outline to that slider that we have at the bottom. So we'll go to Fit again and now you can see we can play this back. Now the lines here look a little bit different in terms of the width. I would always look at that 100% if I wanted to kind of check and see um, which one was heavier. So we're kind of eyeballing this. So if I make the bottom one a little thinner, that matches the top one a little bit better. We could do the math and figure out how big or small they should be, but we're not going to for this example. So now you can see as it plays down, we have that line at the top and bottom. And of course we can come in and change the color of that line at any point in time. So we can click on the down arrow or on this color box and they both kind of allow you to change the color in different ways. So let's make that yellow, which goes quite nicely with the gray and the purple. And we'll go back to fit again here. And you can see now we have this countdown timer with that top and bottom outline working quite nicely. So hopefully this tutorial has been useful and there's a lot of useful tips in here for keyframing, for cropping things, for using compound clips to make Final Cut Pro do things that some of the plugins won't do um, when you want them to. Um, and this is used in a few different examples. But if you've enjoyed this tutorial, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button to get an update whenever I post a new one. Um, but thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next tutorial.